Welcome back to Automotive Discussion and this time it's gonna probably be a short video because we're discussing there is no replacement for displacement. Now, in the 1920s when luxury cars were long and had more cylinders than today's supercars basically or the same amount because they had things like straight 12s and straight 8s and massive displacement engines that made no power whatsoever. But that is the technology. And speaking of technology, that is one of my points for this. If you go for a, say, a 1977 Ford LTD or something with a 302 V8, that has a displacement of 5 liters in metric units. And compare it to something like a Ford Fiesta of today. A 1.3 liter, 3 cylinder, or is it a 1 liter? I think it's a 1 liter. 1 liter, 3 cylinders, 100 and something odd horsepower. And the engine block fits on an A4 piece of paper. With the 77 LTD with a 302 in it, it is 8 cylinders, 5 liters, and 120 odd horsepower. I don't think that displacement helped it any. If the engines of back in the day, in the 60s and 70s, were as efficient as you can make an engine today with direct injection, turbocharging, and electronic computers to control everything, that would make those engines a lot better. You could push a lot more horsepower out of them because you can control the air fuel mixture and well you probably should bump a bigger cam as well because the 70s were smog era. They were packed with crap you don't need and that will only slow a car down. But that was to meet regulations. But with that said, back in the day you couldn't really keep up with a big engine. Because that was where all the power was. They had ground pounding torque. You think of the uh, Mopar 440s and the 4.6 Hemis. Both had torque as a... yeah, you wouldn't know what hit you. But compare that to, well, down the scale, like a 144 or a 174 straight 6. That was nothing. I was a regular grocery getter. That would take you and maybe grandma from, well, to and from church and drive mom and the kids to the store to get some food, buy the groceries, but it wouldn't do much else. And that is why a lot of people still then upgrade those straight sixes to V8s in these old cars. The problem is, really want that engine, a V8 engine that is, with a big displacement and you want okay power, you really should go the line of a new engine, well a newer engine. Say like a, an LS like everyone does, or a Ford Coyote engine, or one of the crate Hemis you can get from Chrysler nowadays. Say you get like a 60, what, yeah, let's compare these then. Say a 60, what was it, was it a Chrysler Valiant? Uh, Chrysler Valiant, Chevy Corvair and Ford Falcon, the three economy class cars of the 1960s from the big three. You take the Valiant with base engine probably be a, a 170 slant 6 making well that was those were 
measured at the crank and without anything on them so probably pushing 100 horsepower maybe and then a falcon with a 144 that was pushing not even a hundred and the Corvair with its boxer engine pushing not a whole hell of a lot so you take those three cars you want to upgrade them to say the baddest version they could be well the most badass version they could be in the day uh, 60 Falcon well Let's, well, let's go with, you go with the engine, go with another engine from the same manufacturer, how about that? Uh, Falcon, you could put a big block in, one of the old Y block, big blocks, uh, 350, what was it, 352? Put one of those in there, you would really have to shoehorn it in to get it in there, but you could. With a Chrysler, back in the 50, and six, early 60 you could probably get one of the old Hemis again you would probably have to do some shoehorning to get it in and with the uh, Corvair I mean well, with extensive modification you could probably throw off what did the Chevys have back then anyway Whatever biggest engine you got and say a 59 Impala. You throw that in the front, modify it, transmission and a solid rear axle instead of those trailing arms. And it would be a lot faster of a car. Now, yes, you could probably get the turbo kit thing for the original boxer for the Corvair, but I was thinking more along the lines of bigger displacement, big engine to make the car go faster. With that done, you would have a car that's decently fast, but it wouldn't have a fast car by today's standards. I mean, the engines would be heavy and cumbersome. Take then today's engines from those manufacturers. Take a 504 Coyote engine, put that in the Falcon. It would have a lot lighter of an engine combination and probably could put it to a say a six uh, Tremec T56 for example and you could probably do this with the other ones as well you could put an LS in the Corvair like probably someone has already done with again transmission down there and then a live rear axle at the back or take the chassis from like a 60s Corvette that would probably work as well and then with the Chrysler you could swap a Hemi in there I mean you get the Hellcats Hellcat motors you can put one of those in and have a really fast car I could do this with all of them like put in a newer car well newer engine from a newer car in the old car with say better technology in it you could well you could have the supercharger like on the Hellcat uh, Fuel injection, that helps power. More developments have gone into engines in that time than, well, that adage is good for. You can say it as much as you want that there's no replacement for displacement, but I mean, supercharging and EFI, that pretty much does it. With enough supercharging and EFI, I'm probably just fueling say that way you could probably get a two liter straightforward to run well outrun really uh, uh, say a 50 v8 the displacement doesn't really matter if the technology is outdated now I will admit that with the bigger engine you will have more torque and you will have a lot more of a grunty engine a compared to like a 2 liter but all in all as a from a power standpoint 
if you go for power, you go for much power as you want, you want technology and innovation instead of just, yeah, displacement. Because like I started to say, in, well like I still said in the start of the video with the um, 77 Ford 302s compared to today's little three cylinder A4 piece of paper block, those have almost the same power rating. And they have an entire Jeep 4 liter engine in between them in displacement. You can take that as an example. You have a tiny little engine that is the size of an A4 piece of paper. You have the big, v well not big, it's a Ford small block, so you have a V8 that houses, well, five liters. And then in between those two, you can put an entire Jeep straight six, four liter in between them. That is the difference in displacement. But the power, it is marginal. You can have a moped engine produce more power than divides those two engines. That is technology. Displacement has a lot to do with low-end torque and all that, but it does not... Well, it is not an all-out remedy for lack of power. You can take whatever engine you want, if you put a turbo on it, or fuel injection, just give it things we have developed over the past, what, 60 years? 50 years? Well... Yeah, things we have developed over the past 50, 50, 40, 50 years. And you would have an engine that would be any of the old V8s. I mean, a lot of today's regular standard runabouts. I mean, you could probably get a Kia that will outrun an, yeah, say a 289 Hypo Mustang from like 60, whatever, 6, 67 probably get a regular Kia today that will outrun that and definitely definitely through turns because I mean they handle like boats compared to something that just sticks to the road and doesn't really make a fuss that is basically my point we have come so far with the technology that displacement well it has an effect it has but it's not an all-out remedy now, if you like this video, you should press that like button down below, also subscribe to this channel, and go check out JCR Garage, which is my other channel, and I will see you later in the next video. If you have any suggestions for our next, next discussion, leave that down below. And also, there is a massive giveaway on the JCR Garage channel that gives one winner out of the first 1,000 subscribers gets a $1,000 gift card on Amazon.com. Whatever you want. You can buy it for $1,000. Now, I will see you later in the next video. Take care.